If science fiction has taught us anything, it's that if you make a little creepy crawly big enough, it very quickly becomes outright terrifying. But this is not science fiction. This was a living, breathing menace in the Carboniferous, which makes it even more horrifying. But just why did it get so huge? This was Arthropleura. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're talking about Arthropleura, an arthropod who took the concept of gigantism and scuttled away with it. Arthropleura was a genus of giant myriapods. They were the weird cousins of centipedes and millipedes. The main difference was that Arthropleura was up to 100 times larger than the average millipede, with some measuring over two meters long. Even the world's largest living millipede, the giant African millipede, couldn't compete. Arthropleura was nine times larger and could have eaten its African cousin as a mid-afternoon snack. The largest Arthropleura ever discovered was found in 2021 by chance on a beach in Northumberland, England. At two and a half meters, this whopper would have been the length of a male Komodo dragon and would have weighed around 50 kilograms. Before that discovery, Arthropleura were thought to be much smaller, as the other two recorded fossils were of juveniles. But when it reached its full adult size, they were behemoths. To really put their size in context, Arthropleura was larger than most of the land vertebrates at the time, which were mostly amphibians. But there were other very large invertebrates sharing the forest with Arthropleura. Our friend Lindsay is a bit of an expert on the subject, so I'll let her tell you about some of the coolest ones. Take it away, Lindsay. Thanks, Danielle. So obviously the Carboniferous period was filled with a variety of animals whose evolutions just went nuts, most notably insects and other arthropods. So let's play a game. I'm gonna ask you a question, then you're gonna answer it, and then I'm gonna show you something, and that's literally it. You know what, it's not even a game. It's like the giant insect version of Dora the Explorer. Okay, do you like dragonflies? How about giant dragonflies? Yeah, Mega Nura, a giant relative to dragonflies. Technically a griffonfly, which has slight morphological differences to dragonflies, but dragonfly nonetheless. They had a wingspan that got to about two and a half feet long. To put that into perspective, your bedroom door is like three feet wide. That's big. That is some alien shenanigans. Their larger size likely meant they had a wider variety to choose from on the Paleozoic mini. Lots of different insects and other invertebrates, like their modern counterparts, but maybe possibly amphibians as well. Dude, imagine a dragonfly eating a frog today. That's unpleasant. Meganeura is kind of the poster child of the Carboniferous, appearing in tons of different paleo art and documentaries and movies, but despite that, not much is known about them. Based on fossils of their relatives, scientists suggest they lived in more open habitats rather than forested areas because their wings were fragile and would have gotten knocked around with the trees. Makes sense to me. All right, do you like scorpions? How about giant scorpions? Pulmona scorpius is one of the largest scorpions to ever exist that we know of, with the largest fossil remains representing a species that was two feet and four inches long. So this time, think of the width of your bedroom door. That is the length of Pomona scorpius eating a Jimmy John's sandwich. Unlike modern scorpions, which generally rely on mechanoreceptive senses for prey capture, Pomona scorpius seems to have relied on their eyesight much more than that. They had proportionally much bigger eyes than today's modern scorpions. For a while, it was unclear if this species spent its life in the water due to other sea scorpions, yes, sea scorpions that were alive during the Paleozoic, which I'm not even gonna touch on because that is a whole other can of worms. But two specimens of Pomona scorpius show evidence of book lungs, which are air breathing organs that land arachnids tend to have. So boom, they were terrestrial. Have fun falling asleep with that. Back to you, Danielle. Researchers hypothesized that Arthropleura would have needed high nutrient food to get as large as it did. That means that small prey like amphibians may have ended up between Arthropleura's mouth parts. Arthropleura had a tough exoskeleton that protected it like a rigid shell. This feature is still in use today, hundreds of millions of years later, by today's millipedes. Why change a thing that's proven to work? The three fossils that we have found are likely actually molted exoskeletons. 
We know this because when they die, the segments of arthropod bodies tend to fall apart quickly. While the fossilized impressions of their discarded exoskeletons are few and far between, the trucks they left behind reveal that they were quite common. Additionally, these tracks fill in some more details about their size and how these creatures moved. We know, for example, that the legs of Arthropleura were upwards of 50 centimeters apart. These tracks are so wide that they have even been mistakenly identified as the tracks of large vertebrates. A last piece of the puzzle that's yet to be found is fossilized evidence of Arthropleura's head. One can only wonder how terrifying its jaw may have been, considering how big its body was. Studying the sediments near Arthropleura's fossils and tracks has hinted that these giants lived in the woods. While they may have been eating amphibians to get swole, they also likely ate the wealth of snacks the forest floor provided. Today's millipedes are essential to the health of the forest ecosystem, processing leaf litter and thereby returning nutrients to the soil. Arthropleura lived in Russia, a landmass that included present-day North America and Western Europe and was closer to the equator during the Carboniferous period. The Carboniferous ranged from about 359 to 299 million years ago and was the fifth interval of the Paleozoic era, wedged between the Devonian, the Age of Fishes, and the Permian periods. The Carboniferous began more than 100 million years before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. But Arthropleura wasn't the only humongous invertebrate at the time. Meganisoptera, nicknamed griffinflies, predatory dragonfly-like bugs with 70-centimeter wingspans, swooped through the skies alongside Mesothyros, another giant insect with a beak-like mouthpart and a 56-centimeter wingspan. On the ground, Arthropleura was joined by another mega-arthropod, the 70-centimeter-long scorpion known as Pulmona scorpius. So just how did these creepy crawlies get so big? The answer to this question is all around us. The Carboniferous period was one of high levels of atmospheric oxygen, an estimated 35%, compared to the 21% oxygen of the air we breathe today. Researchers believe that this extra oxygen may have contributed to the increase in size of organisms, including giant terrestrial arthropods. They hypothesized that because most life on Earth needs oxygen to create the chemical energy that powers cells, more oxygen in the environment enabled more growth. Combined with their lack of land predators, Arthropleura was basically untouchable. We don't know exactly what caused the extinction of Arthropleura. Reptiles, which were on the rise in the Permian, may have outcompeted them for food and even preyed on them. We may never know what spelled the end for these giant bugs, but their legacy of making our collective skin crawl remains. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.